I'm back. I know it's been a while um, since the carving course in Annapolis, but I've been busy um, learning how to carve and I found that I can't learn how to carve. Um, the workbench just gets covered in all the tools and build the model at the same time. So just to quickly recap, um, what I found is I needed to have some specialized container for all my carving tools. So this is an old makeup case. So all the skewers and drills are in there, sharpening bits, um, gloves, files, um, all sorts of interesting goodies that I've collected over the last few months and then the bits and pieces of carving. Um, and of course, perhaps the most important, sharpening stones in this case these are some diamond plates that I use to sharpen um, one is at 6,000 and one is at 1,000 and I keep them all here so when I'm going to carve I just need to pick this box up and go wherever I'm going to go and I'll just quickly go through my transition what I found is that if I wanted to progress and learn how to carve I really had to devote the time so it's probably close to three months I've been doing nothing but carving. I set myself a series of exercises and these are them in, in simple terms. Um, I haven't tried to make works of art out of these things, uh, looked for difficult things to do, things that would um, stretch my abilities and I also use different woods. I'm using three or four woods, a coma, mahogany, juniper and I actually have some boxwood pieces as well. Some were carved based on a backwood, some like this one which is quite difficult, I carved this totally free um, in a square and then cut it out. Um, what I found is you certainly need to um, have support when you're doing these carvings otherwise you break them and they're all over scale, they're not to the same scale as I would be using on, on the model. And that was really to hone the techniques and to understand how to make up pieces. These few little pieces here started to come down and reflect shapes and carvings that I might use on the boat. Then this is a series of scroll patterns, again just looking at different techniques. Um, and I keep all the examples on a board so that when I'm going to do a carving, I can come back and reflect how did I deal with this. And a lot of them have, you'll start to see under carvings, which turned out to be very important in getting the piece to, to lift off whatever the base is you're putting them. And then these are my final two. This was an exercise sent to me by David and I whipped it out in two days and got it down pretty good. And then this was my last one, which is a rose, which had some deep insets. And again, a lot of under carvings. I'm not sure if you can see them here, where the leaves are actually lifted off of the back. And so I'm starting to get worried that I'll become a carver and stop a model builder. So I've packed my stuff up. And from time to time, I will take them out and do some carvings, but it's time to get back to carving. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it's time to get back to building the HMS Thorn. So let's get going. In video 114, um, I showed how I made up the standards which are mounted here on the model. And of course, I went looking because I had to make up 18 of them. And for the life of me, I can't find out where I put them. And then I said to myself, well, I remember making each one um, by itself. It must be an easy way um, to mass produce these. And of course, there is. So I took out my Proxon shaper and made up a piece. And this is how I mass produced more, much more than the 18 I need. The process wasn't too difficult. I, I made up this blank and rough shaped it into place. So I got um, the length and the width and then literally put it on the shaper so that I would have the slot 
at the exact same height. That was probably the, the most difficult thing to do. And kept going until I got a perfect match with the standard that I liked uh, from the previous set. Then I went on to the, um, to the Jim Bond saw and the slot for the blade um, was too thick. I was losing pieces down the slot. So I simply put a piece of scotch tape on it and that prevented the um, pieces uh, coming out. And of course, once you put it on, just run the blade up inside and you cut them off like biscuits and they come off. The, the odd one went flying and the odd one also still went through. But I was able to make well over 40 of them, much more than I will need. So really happy with the process. Well, you know, keeping it honest is my motto. So the molding on top here, I had fooled around with it when I was trying to figure out how the, um, the standards were going to go. And of course, I cut them going right through the molding only to check again and find out afterwards that it goes below the molding. So I have taken this out, made up a new piece, and I'll stick that in place. I was actually very lucky that um, when I got the piece off, I didn't damage the paint, the red paint. Now I'm going to stick the standard to the channel and the first thing we realize is there are different heights. If you look at, this is the stern, you'll see it's below the molding. Then on the center or middle piece, it's through the molding, but not above it. And at the bow, it actually goes significantly through the molding. This handheld vise was just the perfect tool to help shape the standards. So we've lined them up and we're going to use a little CA. We're just going to wet the bottom and then hold it in place. Now the safe way to do this would have been to use PVA glue, which means that if I didn't get it lined up perfectly, I could just shift it around with CA you don't have that luxury. Um, and in one case, I did get it wrong and had to redo it. Now the next challenge is what color. If you go back and look at the 3D um, illustrations, you'll see that they use a very dark gray. And down to the paint shop I went, and of course there's no pre-mixed dark gray. And there's no question I could um, mix and match the gray that I got, um, which is quite light, um, to that. The problem is that I'm going to be installing these at different times, um, so I'm going to have to mix multiple batches of dark gray. And I know, based on experience, that um, I'm not going to match it perfectly each time. Now, the color isn't written in stone, so the truth is you can do what's shown in the illustration, or in my case, I was able to get this warm gray, and, and this is what I use for all of them. I don't have to mix it. I know the color will be consistent every time I use it. So that's what I've done. There's a lot of discussion about whether, when we have these small parts, whether we should um, use the airbrush and spray them on. I like to, um, to use a, a paintbrush. I put a very watered down first coat on it, which raises um, little hairs on the, on the wood and then I lightly sand that off and then I'll put two coats after that and that seems to work just fine. And we're ready to stick the, um, the channel onto the model. Um, I use a very thin piece of wood um, that allows me to uh, put exactly the amount of glue because you don't want a, a lot of spill off coming on the edges. And again, I coat both surfaces. I coat the model itself and the channel itself so that I get, I know I get good adhesion. Um, and then of course, clean up and eventually put some clamps on it 
and you need to remember when you put the clamps on it that the clamp will actually press out some more glue so you need to go back and make sure that you take out all the glue so we've got it all finished and ready to go in but of course we have to make sure that we're sticking wood on wood so we're going to clean all the paint off of the edge here which is going to stick here and then we're going to sand these so again we get a wood on wood um, contact and we get the glue to adhere properly to the two pieces um, it will stick on the acrylic but if you want a, if you want a proper connection you need to get past the paint and and literally get get to the wood and this can be a real pain um, you need to make sure that you don't scrape off any of the scroll that's not going to be covered by the standard again a trial fit and it all looks great no touch-up is necessary and so we just need to take this back out um, these pins just line up perfectly with the holes and apply the glue and again it's the same technique as we use with the mizzen um, a shaped piece of in this case it's a bamboo skewer um, and it allows me to put just the right size um, glue onto the scraped surface and you can reshape it depending on the thickness you want to put down. Another little tip when you're using these dowels as pins, put them on last so the glue doesn't dry because um, it would give you trouble getting the dowel in. And here's the real test of how good a fit you did before you painted it and stuck it. Um, um, I'm not showing you this, but I had not done such a great um, job the first time around. And I actually, as I clamped it up, there was a little space. And uh, uh, of course, the top of the standard broke and I had to redo the end the entire thing. Just like we've done before, cleanup is most important. In this case, it was much easier because I could see what I was doing. And um, sometimes you use water. You can also use alcohol um, to clean up because it, the acrylic is set and it won't have an effect on the acrylic paint um, once it's dried. To secure the channels, one would think that we really should install the chains and these hold the dead eye and have a series of upper middle and toe links um, which tie into a preventer plate which is nailed or bolted into the side of the hull. And this would give um, a certain sense of strength um, to the channel. We're not going to do this now, so it means that I have to be very careful when I'm handling, handling the model because if I hit any of these uh, channels, they're going to break off and really cause a mess. The last piece to add is the plancher or covering board. And that goes right here. And I'm not going to put it in now. Um, because it's unsupported and the odds of me breaking this off are pretty high. Um, the other interesting thing about this compared to the others is it's a natural wood, it's not painted. Um, so again, we'll just put some rub on, rub on, poly, wipe on poly and, and that'll be it. So that's it for this exercise. Um, the other side, of course, is it just the exact reverse of this. And I won't go through that. And we'll see you in the next video. 
So this is a nice short one. And remember, keep modeling.